Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today there is another unforeseen OM605 topic, that's why you see the engine here. Um, to give you some explanation also why the content is not coming in a frequency like in the last two months. Um, I was in between two jobs the last two months, that's why I could create a lot of content and make videos uh, at least two a week. But uh, now I'm in a new job and the last uh, week was also kind of stressful. And I think in the future the videos will come still, but not on a weekly basis. Um, but I will try to keep the content coming. Um, what we see here is also one of the reasons why I was so stressed the last week. Um, this is the former engine of the car I already showed you in a video, my OM605 sleeper build. And as you see, it has a new engine now. And I'm not sure what happened. So this car, I showed you any detail on it. And I drove it now for 25,000 kilometers, I think. With this setup, the 7mm pump and the Garrett GTX uh, turbocharger. And it was running great. I abused it a lot. Was driving four hours straight on the um, highway, full throttle, over 200 kph. And I did this a lot of times and nothing ever happened. It was always running great. Um, but two weeks ago I was on the highway and I was driving some kind of fast, but not nothing unusual. So I accelerated from 100 to 200 a few times and uh, was driving quickly, let's say, but nothing I didn't do before. Uh, but after that, uh, when idling, I heard that something changed on the engine. So the idle was getting rough. It was it kind of had trouble to keep it idling. And uh, I immediately knew there could be something wrong with the engine. Then when I checked it, it had a lot of blow-by and a lot of oil was coming out of the ventilation system and went into the intake system. And I knew, okay, there must be something mechanically broken, destroyed, damaged, whatever. So I stressed myself because this is the only car I have for daily use. I also have my M104 Turbo, but at the moment I disassembled the suspension for a video because I want to show you the Unibal kit I designed and that's why I had the problem that I had no daily driver and I had to change the engine quickly because um, the first day of my new job was right ahead. So stressful you can imagine maybe and i didn't have time yet to find out what happened maybe the gods or destiny wants to tell me that i should not put my hands on the om engines maybe it's not made for me i try to always do my best build a nice setup um, but well it didn't work again <laughs> what can i say um we will find out is it my mistake did i do something wrong but i kind of think if i did something wrong it would have happened earlier not after 25000 kilometers and of course i did oil change filter changes during that time a few times so actually i'm not sure we will find out and uh, i will start by disassembling it's already somewhat disassembled because I needed the injection pump, of course. And I also changed the valve cover to the one with the newer gasket. Uh, but I will take part by part off of this engine and show you when there's something interesting and some damage can be seen. And together we will find out what happened. Let's have a look at the camshafts. There is nothing to see. It all looks nice. 
all looks clean and also the engine turns around like it should there's nothing to feel like any unexpected resistance or anything like that so we will search further I will check timing also it's kind of bad because the pump is out but I will kind of try to check it maybe put an old pump in and then check whether the, the, the timing changed somehow maybe the crank pulley switched or moved on the crankshaft not sure so it was definitely not a damage caused by timing or lubrication problem I checked the timing and it was perfect and also the bearing areas for the camshafts they look perfect nowhere to see what I will do now is to get the injectors out and have a look inside the pre-chamber I could imagine that maybe the pre-chamber tip fall off on one of the cylinders and therefore the piston got damaged and we got the, the blow by by scratches on the cylinder walls or maybe the piston got some damage like uh, uh, something broke off from the edge piston ring broke or whatever we will see the injectors are out and I'm not sure it can be seen but the balls are in place and also you can see the tip of the glow plug and it's in any pre-chamber the same so this all looks very good so I guess the problem must lay within the block assembly you will dig deeper there's actually no damage to be seen on the head I think the marks you see on the exhaust valves is just from taking the head off I was kind of uncareful by taking it off I also had the theory that uh, the exhaust valves hit the pistons somehow but I think this is from taking it off um, there are no marks on the pistons but I already scratched around here a little there seems to be some damage to the pistons not only to one but to all of them you see there's some edge missing here there in this area there's some broken off edge and that's what is all around so maybe the exhaust gas temperature got too high or the thermical load was too high you see there's definitely something wrong with the piston it's not only one it's all of them all the pistons have some kind of damage on the edges broken off edges more will be seen when I take off the pistons uh, take them out I mean yeah, and that's what you will see in one second but I will do this tomorrow because it's getting late but uh, we can pre-summarize there's actually no damage on the head or anything it's just that the pistons seem to have gotten too hot or small exhaust gas housing maybe a lot of back pressure maybe also some high EGTs so it is the next day now meanwhile I've put the engine on an engine stand and I'm ready to turn it around and pull the pistons out 
I also talked to a friend of mine, which is uh, a professional engine repairman. He has his own company for 20 years, I think. And I talked to him about the pistons, what I saw and how they looked. And he also thinks that the pistons got slowly cooked over time. Always seen much heat and therefore disintegrated over time. This engine has seen a lot of uh, load on the autobahn, on the highway, and that for a long period of time. I recaptured uh, the kilometers I ran with this car. Uh, I, I said it wrong because I got this car around 186,000 kilometers on the clock. And then I think I drove 4,000 kilometers, something around that before I um, made the build. So it was around 190,000 kilometers. And now the car has 220,000. So it's almost or not almost, it's a little over 30,000 kilometers. This car has seen um, high loads on the highway and all around during daily use. And don't forget, this was a build with early spool, so it's not like that you drive around uh, with an NA engine in daily use. This always had boost when accelerating from zero from the traffic light. You always were running in the boost, uh, so this car has seen a lot of boost and a lot of load. And yeah, I think there wasn't actually something wrong with the injection timing or with the injection system or something like that. Maybe it's because the turbocharger was small, so the exhaust gas housing was pretty small. A lot of exhaust gas pressure, therefore, could be one reason for that. So um, this increases the thermical load on the pistons it's themselves. Um, but it's all speculation. I will pull the pistons now and we will have a closer look after I wash them and we can see the surface better. I got all pistons out and it was making me nervous because piston by piston I took them out and it looked like this is a perfectly healthy engine. So except for the pittings on the piston surface, there was nothing to see. The bearings look very nice, like uh, corresponding to the kilometers, they're in perfect condition, no wear. The pistons themselves also look very good, uh, except for the pittings, I will show you. In more detail I tried to clean one piston in short time um, I hope the ca camera is good enough to show you the pittings but I think you can already see let me try to focus this you see those darker spots this is looking like the piston was washed out by the exhaust gases during time so this might be an indicator that the piston was under a lot of stress a lot of heat during the time and all the pistons look similar so they all experience this kind of damage let's say but this is not the reason for the rough idle and why the engine had so much blow by suddenly and the problem for that I found on the last cylinder, so the one which gets the highest thermical load, and that's what you see here. Can you see it? The area between the rings is broken. I even can take it out or at least try to take it out when I took the piston out it came right towards me now it seems to be stuck 
well it doesn't want to come out but you can see there's a crack and there is also a crack here so this piece in between the two first rings could be taken out completely and also you see there's this kind of groove here which shouldn't be there so this is broken off material because there's a compound of two materials there's some harder material i think it's some ferro based material uh, combined with the aluminium of the piston and the area in between those two materials seem to have failed and broken out there you can also see the damage and that's why the engine suddenly had rough idle this must have happened at 4500 rpm on the highway and then after that the idle was rough and a lot of blow by yeah there you see what can happen to your super turbo diesel um, not sure if this was a mistake on the setup or if it's just something that can happen and you have no control over maybe it was in combination with some excessive heat but the water temperature always was in the right area so always 80 to 90 degrees 90 degrees celsius maximum um, but yeah a lot of kilometers a lot of load on these pistons and uh, you see what happens but i'm glad i found the mistake and was able to show you something interesting this was also interesting and a learning experience for me i've never had this kind of damage so some additional information while cutting this video because I had another talk with my friend the engine repairman and I talked to him about the damage on the piston and he has experienced this a lot of times on uh, customer engines and says this could be because of knocking um, on diesel engines I wasn't so much aware that knocking could be a problem but uh, because the, the running process itself is some kind of knocking for a diesel engine but this can happen when there is excessive oil in the intake side so for example from a broken turbocharger or a lot of oily blow by which gets sucked into the engine and on high loads this mixture of air and oil can pre-ignite um, similar to what knocking is on a petrol engine and this can cause pittings and also piston damage like you have seen on my engine so i'm now thinking maybe this was a problem with oil in the intake i didn't see that the uh, uh, turbocharger had any damage it was performing well and there was actually no use of oil i drove the car for a long time and the oil level didn't uh, go down much not more than it is on a on a normal car um, so I will need to check is there maybe something wrong with the turbocharger maybe there was already some blow by or a lot of blow by which transported a lot of oil into the intake and this could cause the, the knocking but uh, that's just as an additional information for you so this could be another reason maybe in combination with the high exhaust gas pressures uh, from the small exhaust gas housing together with some oil in the intake we experienced some knocking which could damage pistons over time um, well back to the video i hope you like this video leave a comment like subscribe tell me shall i ever 
put my hands on OM engines again or not. I think I will stay away from them. I don't seem to have much luck with them. Or maybe I'm just not meant to build them. Um, yeah, and see you in the next video.